Well, how do the charms to Zion, Captain of the Steves? Now, this is a cup of tea with Captain Steve video, and we're going to be talking predominantly about No Man's Sky in today's episode. We're going to be talking about what the community thinks, because I've done some community polls and I've left them going for quite a long time. To be honest, completely forgot about them until the other day when one of my actual watchers and viewers hit me up and said, Captain Steve, these polls that you said you're going to do a video on, are you going to do a video on them? Yeah, I've got a good point. I did say I was going to. So here we go. That's. This is that video. Okay, so let's jump on over to the old Tinterweb, shall we, people inside the viewerverse? I think we should. That goes. Like a pow! There I am on the old Tinterwebs. Right, okay, um, let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger for you, shall we? We'll zoom that in by, what, 200 times? Yeah, 250 times. There we go, 250 zoom, Captain. Dundley and done. Right, so this is the first poll that I asked. This was nine days ago. If this year is a big year for No Man's Sky, what would be your perfect Gib update? Add it in the comments as a short bullet point list like this. Now, if you don't know what a Gib year is, we've had Sean Murray drop this sort of ASCII emoji. We put it on a giant banner and said thank you to him one year. But whenever he does that, this Gib emoji, it's usually a massive update, like a complete overhaul of the core engine. The last real update that hit that, I think, was Next. It might have been Origins that had a Gib. I'm not 100% sure, but Next definitely was a Gib update. And I think Origins may have been. I'm just going to have a little sip of my tea before I read out this bullet point list. Hmm. Lovely jubbly. Right, don't worry, that's not broken. It's it's not a live video. This is probably a premiere. Anyway, my Gib, Gib update, I want to call it Odyssey. And these are the things that I would love to see in it. So end game loop improved. Because at the moment you get to the end, you jump to another universe and you're in a new universe right at the start. Ships all broken, pretty much starting again. And there's 256 universes. I'd like to see a little bit of a better loop. Some reason to go through all 256 universes, even if it meant reducing that galaxy count down to maybe 16, but make every universe different and maybe aim it at different builds and eras of the game's progression, perhaps. I don't know. There's all sorts they could do with that. They could apply mods to it, whatever. Okay. Ariadne, Summer Law as a story. So all the people that are new here right now, you probably don't know what the fudge I'm on about, but people that have been here for quite some time, about three summers ago now, Ariadne, inside of the um, the spatial anomaly, you know the little, when you go up the ramp, there's a, a person standing there that looks like they've got a Hello Kitty type looking face that's gone through a lawnmower. That's Ariadne. Now, during the weekend missions, we used to have different weekend missions every weekend, and it would give you a little bit of lore where well, she went missing and other characters inside the spatial anomaly went looking for her couldn't find her and it was our jobs to try and find out what happened to her and each week there was a different mission that gave different lore and it turns out that ariani went aboard a dark freighter in the void between planets or systems and wasn't seen again and then all of a sudden a doppelganger a clone of ariadne has appeared on the spatial anomaly so we know that she's some sort of weird spy, but for who and for what reasons? Hasn't actually been put out there as yet, people. No, it hasn't. Okay, so I want that placed into the game as a story arc, almost like, um, you know, the good old Artemis. And then that way, anybody that's picking the game up new and fresh eyes to it, get to see all that lovely lore. Be awesome, I guess. So next off, I've got Rage to the Void and the Realm of Glass. Hmm, okay, coolio. So I think that one's pretty self-explanatory, really. Um, it'd be nice to get new loot from those sort of areas. More variety to all biomes and fauna. Yeah, I don't know whether they'd ever put in the super formula. The super formula is something that I've been banging on about for years. But um, I think we're too far down the biome route to, to go to super formulas. Next up, I have ship perks and missions so at the moment every single ship is pretty much the same isn't it really it'd be nice if you've got a shuttle you could pick up say carry passenger from place a to place b and you see a little npc walk over disappear get in your ship and off you go you take them to where they want to go to it'd be nice if haulers had smuggling missions not necessarily from just pirate systems from normal areas of space to normal areas of space or you can choose even deadlier ones where you take something from normal area of space to a pirate system or something you know smuggling type runs or just normal runs of cargo shipping yeah 
like being an intergalactic postman. Oh, this Gek needs this letter delivery. And fighters at advanced bounty missions, you know. That'd be cool. Not just fighting and shooting down ships, but maybe even going down to planets, seeing an NPC running around on the surface or in an, or in an exocraft, and you blow that up or shoot them down. Or even just um, bring them back alive, so land next to them, chase them down, grab them, almost like Mando-type style, you know? That'd be quite cool. Okay, next off. Oh, and perks. It'd be nice if the ships had perks. You know, like on your freighter at the moment, you've got the desk that scans the whole system and you can find out what's on every planet. Something like that, but say in, say, explorer ships, for example. The living ship's already got a perk. When you jump for a black hole, nothing gets damaged because it's organic, you know. But give those perks to all ships. That'd be cool. Or even put perks on parts now. Because we can scrap ships, maybe we could just look for parts that got perks and build a perk-related ship that's got all different perks related to the parts that you build it with. That'd be cool. There's ways and means they could implement that. Quick Silver Mission Overhaul. Now, a lot of the Quick Silver missions that we run from the actual Spatial Anomaly, as soon as you start them and you do the key first element, a lot of them turn into a solo mission. And if you're in a fire team and you've got three other people with you, they're just tagging along for sights and giggles. It's not all that great, to be fair. It's like the stranded life form. You pick up that part, then the person that's got the part has to go get it analysed and has to come back and give it to the traveller, while the rest of the people are like, oh, what do we do? Oh, twiddle some thumbs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we need a couple of missions overhauled specifically for people in a team. And I think the next year should actually pick up, oh, you're in a team. We're going to hand you a load of multiplayer type missions rather than singular solo ones, you know? Anyways. Multiplayer fixed and more missions. Well, I've just mentioned about multiplayer missions. It'd be nice if there was a way to trigger multiplayer missions from your own base or from your freighter. We used to be able to trigger multiple multiplayer missions from freighter. They got rid of that. Don't know why. But anyway, fix multiplayer because at the moment it's not very stable. Heck no, it's not. Sorry, I had a little bit of a frog in the throat. I've cleared that with a lovely bit of tea. Anyways, dead planet terraforming. So there's quite a lot of dead and abandoned systems. There's a lot of dead and abandoned planets. It'd be nice if we could take ownership of maybe the abandoned systems and the abandoned station, fix up the station, choose how we want the outer hull to look, how we want the layout to be, all that sort of stuff, make them a bit more modular, and then maybe make it so we can terraform dead planets and put in maybe mixed biomes. Maybe we could have one terraformer at the top of the planet, one at the bottom, so at least there was a north and south divide when it comes to biomes. That'd be pretty darn freaking cool. I did a whole video on how I think that should look. If I can find it, because it's an old video, I put a link in the top right corner over there. Hit that up. Okay, shaders like we have for ships for everything else. So, you know, those shaders that we're now getting for our ship customization. It'd be nice to have them for our actual suit and also for our multi-tools. So at least we look very more personalized and individual because at the moment, a lot of people look similar or we know what they've done to get where they are. It'd be nice if there was a bit more, a bit more customization there, you know? Ability to create your own custom expeditions and challenges and share them with other players. At the moment, we can make bike beat tracks. Don't know whether you knew that, if you're quite new to the game, there's so much in it. But you can actually put down like a little jukeboxy thing at your base and you can program it using a bike beat track and you can make your own music. I like it if there was some sort of modular system, a little bit like how you assemble the tracks of music, but assembling your own sort of um, expedition, you know, click that, click this, click that, no programming involved. And then you can share that expedition, that mission with somebody else. They go up to, you know, the new console inside of the spatial anomaly where we can trigger expeditions and they can load in one of these programmed expeditions and go on it. I think that'd be pretty darn freaking gnarly and cool. Heck yes, that could breathe some life into the game. Anyways, I did ask for everybody's feedback. It's had 20 likes. It's had quite a lot of views, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, it's got quite a lot of comments. So there's quite a lot of people that have chimed in to say what they would like to see. So here we go. We've got Crazy Cam. Hello, Crazy Cam. I think it was Crazy Cam that actually messaged me to say, Captain Steve, are you going to do this video? <laughs> Improved proc gen and terrain. Super formula, perhaps. Uh, I think they've locked too far into the biome route, and I kind of feel that the Switch is doing everything the Switch can do. I kind of lost the hopes and dreams for Super Formula, but if they were to put in the Realm of Glass or the Void, like a different realm, like they did with Adrift, and they maybe removed base building or anything that causes complexity, maybe we might see it. 
You know, there's a chance. I'm not going to rule it out 100%, but I've been banging that drum for about, what, six or seven years, and it hasn't happened or whatever. Anyway, more variety in fauna and foliage. Pretty much on, on that. Yes, heck yes. Reasons to stay on planet. Yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah, it seems you land, you sort of do a little mini recce, maybe scan a few things, and then you know what's on the rest of the planet. You jump in it, you fly on off. It'd be nice if every planet had something that was super rare, like a megafauna or something that is completely unique to every single planet. But considering there's like 16 quintillion planets, that's... Yeah. Hmm. What would keep you on the planet, Crazy Cam? What would keep you busy on that planet? Hmm. Perhaps I need to make a video on what could keep people... I think I've already made one, actually, but God knows where that is now. I might have to make a newer one of what will keep people on planet. More depth in features. Yeah, just revisit pretty much every single update that's added something core, like to the three, the four cores, the four pillars, the survival, the, um, the combat, the exploration, and the other one that eludes me right now. Trade. That's it. Yeah, go and bottom all of those out. Revisit them all, add a bit of depth, add a bit of polish. Heck yes. Oh, and gameplay and polish. Lovely. Yeah. Better ship perks and stats and more reasons to want to own a fighter or an explorer of a ship. So we touched on that in my ideas. 100% agree. Finish lore and stories that have never finished or got answered. The Ariadne one is the one that I am most like want to see finished off but there's so many others you're quite right yes bottoming out of the law it's like what is going on with the water what is the 166 is the countdown actually moving what's going on with the void mother yeah all this sort of stuff it'd be nice to have that all sorted tied up with a lovely little bow on it before light no sky drops i mean it'd be nice i mean light no fire sorry Part 4 to the ARG. Yes, we still haven't had confirmation that Part 4 has been concluded or closed off. So you're quite right. That is still active right now. Yeah, good point. Okay, we've got security. Double nine, double nine. Or quadruple nine. Okay, here we go. Repeatable planet-based dungeons. Kind of like derelict freighters. Cool. More interactable furniture for bases and freighters. Bed with resting bonus. Ability to build pools, hot tubs, and more food type options. Eh. I would make it a little bit more sort of immersive, wouldn't it? An immersion update. Ooh, that, that could be very much on the cards, especially for the old VR players. Heck yeah. Yeah, good shout. Good shout. All good shouts there. The HK station ownership would be fire. Heck yes, it would. Yes, it would. Especially in my case. You know, I'm not, I'm not very good at looking after myself. My station will probably catch fire in the first couple of days. Okay, here we go then. We've got Zork, Zaro, Zork, whatever your name is. We've got that person. It says, my biggest dream update for all NMS would be having some kind of control command over our freighter. So we could call him during fights for him to fight with us. Like tagging a freighter and ours would then start firing at it. Well, I don't know whether you realise this, but you know when you pick up like the, um, the bounty missions, hunt dangerous pirates, whatever. When you fly out to the destination of where the pirate is, before you scan for the pirate, call in your freighter. Okay, Then scan for the pirates. When they start flying in, your freighter actually launches a load of fighters and will start shooting at them as well. I haven't tried it with the Sentinel Dreadnaughty class type one or the Pirate Freighter Dreadnaughty type class one yet. So, yeah, your freighter might be really proper kick butt. But, um, yeah, it helps anyway. It helps with killing out the pirates. Coolio, yeah. so there's that. That does happen. But it'd be nice if there was more to that. Uh, I've always thought it'd be nice if you could actually tweak the you know the gun turrets and things that are mounted on your freighter it'd be nice if there was hot points where you could swap them out and maybe put in gatling guns missile launchers and choose your your weaponry or if you wanted to just put in more shield generators or something to have a bit more of a personalized sort of um, freighter i would like that but yes to be able to target things and stuff would be awesome and also, if all your frigates actually had the actual crews on that they're supposed to have, and if you could actually go visit your frigate brig bridges and things, that'd be cool. Something more reliable than what we have now. A simple static passive big freighter. I remember being able to make my freighter engage in combat, but it's been years. And now that I have a pirate one, 
I can't make him engage against anything. I'm so disappointed. So much potential in the game in many ways. Oh, well, maybe that little thing that I just mentioned about, you know, calling in your freighter, then scanning for the pirates. Maybe that doesn't work anymore. The last time I did it was freaking ages ago. So maybe it was when you last did it. Ah, sorry, I should have read ahead, shouldn't I? Should have read your full message before I chimed in with my take. Heck yeah. Anyway, we've got Chris here. So what's the end of there? Chris at Diahodes. Hmm, coolio. The big year looks like a middling year at bear so far. I think at best so far. Um, yeah, I think it's... I think it's been a bigger year than last year, but that isn't difficult. Last year was a fairly odd year. I mean, do we get echoes last year? That was fairly large, but at the same time, I mean, it brought in a new race. It brought in the echo camps, but the echo camps feel very copy and pasted and the missions that they give aren't all that varied. You know, the echoes content wasn't as deep as it looked at first glance. The thing with the echoes update that I did like was the new Atlas multi tools as well. And when I first saw them, I thought, oh my days, how many are there to unlock? And then we found that there was maybe what about six or seven variants and then a variance with color and logo placement. And that was about it. I kind of felt that, you know, the Sentinel interceptors gave us more variety. They were far more modular. They were far cooler. Last year was a fairly mediocre mid middling year. This year we've had the Adrift, which has given us ship customization as well. And I think that's got more scope for the future if they pad that out and add all ships into customization. This year, is it bigger than last year? Is it not? I don't know. It's yeah, I think you're quite right. I think it is a middling year. I, th I think you're right. Yeah, I I'm trying to I'm trying to spin a positive. But then looking at this year and looking at last year, I think they're about on par. And I would say last year was a middle year. So yeah, you're right. It's so far a middle year for sure. Let's just hope that they can make it a big year with what's left. I mean, we're halfway through, halfway through. And already I'm, I'm thinking that this year is, is parallel in a roundabout way to last. I could be wrong. Okay, Penguin001 or Pickwin. Pickwin, Pickwin, not Penguin. Sorry, it's Pickwin. Claudia, how about base part counter? Fix multiplayer for all, finish the lore, add some a a epic cinema scenes like the first time events, like encountering your ship. Uh, defeat, defeat, I don't know what that is. Send to Galaxy Travel, a base visitor log with anonymous features for those who just want to be travelers. Customizable self expedition mode to make pirate mode, fugitive mode, and the ability to make your own law for those with a few text boxes and paragraphs and stuff. That's pretty cool. Like almost implement an RPG maker. I used to love RPG maker XP going back in the day. Oh, yeah. If they added in elements like that where you can make your own sort of you know, story arc, that'd be pretty darn sweet. We did mention about, um, you know, expeditions, customized expeditions. Maybe that could kind of sit in parallel with that. That could be quite a good thing. The base part counter is a freaking phenomenal idea. I would also like it where if you go to your base computer, rather than have comms balls activated, if somebody puts down a comms ball, it'd be nice if your base computer just absorbs it, it goes, <laughs> and it just puts it in as a guest book entry, you know? I'd like base computers to A, list the base part count, and also have a guest book where people can sign it and say, I loved your base. Please, can you come and take a look at one of mine? You know, and you can leave a portal code or something. That'd be pretty darn sweet. So it promotes people to just go, oh, well, they've come and looked at my base. I'll go look at their base. And it builds more of a base building community in that sense. You come across new bases you never come across, come across new ideas, new inspiration. I think just something like a simple guest book in there and a part counter, like you mentioned, could massively um, improve base community building and all that sort of shenanigans you know we got pookie here as well hello there pookie yes member of mine i agree with improved end game loop i've said it before but i really want to see a proper guild system implemented i mean they have touched on guilds now and made them a little bit more of a feature inside a game but they could take that to another level you're quite right we could get guild related missions 
more so in depth than we have now that are almost top tier missions you know you you really want to run them when you're s-classed everything you know something more of a challenge for guilds i think would be cool and if you've got like a guild cape or guild rewards like a cool guild multi-tool and you only got certain guild rewards for certain guilds that could add a massive dimension to it as well pookie yeah if you do see anybody with these little icons by them they're um, members of mine. There you go. If you want a lovely little mem member icon. And they change over time as well. Depending on how long you've been a member for. They get groovier as time goes on. Hey guys. So yeah. One year and 11 months, Pookie. Thank you. We've got Jord on top. I agree with the guy that said space station ownership. Oof. That would be fire. Hey guys. It would be fire. Yes. I've done a few videos on space station ownership. One of them I thought was really cool. Where... Depending on what you've scanned inside of that system, and then you own your station, you can then upload it to a galactic auction house and auction it off to the Gek, the Corvax, or the Viking. But they're going to bid differently, and they, you know, the Viking are going to pay you perhaps inside of um, Quicksilver, where the Corvax will pay you in nanites and the Gek will pay you in units. But it depends on what you've scanned. So if you scanned a load of the fauna on the planet, then the Viking are going to be interested for hunting grounds. If you scanned all the minerals and things that are going to bring riches and wealth and all that sort of stuff, then the Gek are going to be the most interested because they want the minerals in those systems. But if you've done a little bit of both and you've scanned all the planets and it's more of a holistic thing, the Corvax are going to be more interested and offer you more nanites. You know, it'd be quite cool. And once you've actually sold the system, if it's an abandoned system, they fix up the space stations, you see all the ships fly in, you see them all go out to the planets, and then structures appear, you know, all the outposts and stuff, and it comes to life. I think that'd be a cool one. A little bit like we did in the Utopia expedition. You know, we had to go out and scan everything on the planets and sell it to the Utopia Corporation. I think Hello Games have already started playing with that idea. And I would love it if it came into the game as canon. I really would. I know that I'd be going around trying to scan systems and sell them. Because why the fudge not? Surveying planets. The only thing is they could do with making the planets more interesting. As and when they do that, add in a bit more variety to make it worth doing. Because right now we'll be just going there and just seeing everything we've seen before. Coolio, we've got Rachel Forrest Foster in the house. Hello there, Rachel Foster. More story and finally get to find out what the station overrides are for. Yeah, a lot of people thought the station overrides would give us station ownership. I'm wondering whether it just shuts down the Sentinel scans in the system for a period of time. But then Hello Games would have implemented that by now, wouldn't they? And they haven't. So I'm wondering whether it might be something bigger. Heck yeah. I'm hoping it warps us into the realm of glass or the void, but I don't want to go off on that tangent because I'll be on it for a while. Michael Copley. Hello there, Michael Copley. Gib, AR VR update. Okay. Let's have a look then. Aliens, fauna, flora, and behaviors. Nice. Assets, generation, procedural content. Yeah. I mean, considering that No Man's Sky is a procedural generated game, the procedural engine is used for certain things like maybe building out a settlement or constructing a derelict freighter. But the rest of the things, it seems to be that it's just constructing stuff from a database of parts, like all of our fauna and flora is just stapled together. Or well, even our flora isn't overly. It's, I mean, they did say they were going to have a blueprint and template system, but it feels like they've gone more down a pre-created sort of thing because you can see the same flora and the same rocks on different planets and different biomes even. It's... <laughs> Uh, the pool needs to be yeah it needs to be more procedural it really does they need to have some sort of procedural morph on the wireframes cool okay right archaeologies mega structures super formulas data mine okay cool it would be nice to see different structures appearing on planets and to have reasons to go to those structures heck yeah Availables, modding support everywhere. So we have got Nexus mods on the PC. Now we have seen that Starfield and Bethesda added those mods onto console. Okay, It can be done, but they are a far bigger studio. It would be good to see mod support on maybe the next gen platforms at the very least. It'd be nice to see it go to the other platforms, but you've got to think of how many platforms they've got this game on now. 
and the hardware that they're running on these different platforms could they actually handle mod support it's a tricky one but yeah i agree or it would be nice if hello games picked the mods that they like the most and implemented them to all the different systems so it promotes going from system to system to system when i say system to system i'm on about galaxy to galaxy or universe to universe like from not euclid to hilbert and eisentam make them all have a different mod applied to them you know because 256 of the same or slight variant uh, just doesn't encourage traveling to them all. Luca Natoli, where to start? Wish list is so long that I could list it all here. I'm so secretly hoping a galactic war starts between races in some galaxies over resources and ownership of said galaxy. Yeah, that'd be cool to see a little bit more of that going on. I mean, we do see freighters sort of attacking other freighters, but we don't see races going at different races all too often, do we? So I, I kind of see what you're coming from there. That, that would put a lot more breathability and immersion in. At the same time, though, the galaxy right now is very much at peace. You go into the stations and you can see Corvax walking around with the Gek, and they're not really fussed. Uh, yeah, all the war has come to a, an end, but it would be nice if there was one galaxy where... It, a universe where it was still all kicking off you know that'd be cool wouldn't it matty hello there matty a new story arc in which we get space covid <laughs> oh, i did ask for people's ideas no ideas a bad idea can you imagine that though it was all walking around with freaking face masks on and in the station there's big billboards going get your booster get your va oh, sponsored by pfizer <laughs> As you're going into the station, sponsored by Pfizer, sponsored by... Oh, for God's sake. Seriously? Yeah. And turn into a badge and then crash into a new planet side of Earth. But no one can light a fire. Honestly, I think that is a, a fun, comical comment. I don't think any of that is something that he wishes for real. Well, thank you, Matty. You made me laugh. You made me chuckle. I'm still thinking of that flying into the... Sponsored by Pfizer. <laughs> okay austin air co epic void twist procedural generated variation corvax prime balerion diandar they're the three planets that are um home worlds to all the three races that'd be freaking awesome to see that implemented it really weird the void mother the atlas twist autophage and new game mechanics with stand standard problems probably not but question mark question mark i don't understand i don't really understand there what you mean there but at the same time it does sound pretty cool a ship printer collected materials it prints random procedural ship just to escape if you're stranded you build the printer sim okay okay so if you are stranded or whatever you can 3d print a ship okay it creates a um, standard gameplay options with no starter ship oh i see what you're on about now so this under where it says probably not but this is the idea in full okay coolio so rather than have a ship at the start you have to 3d print one out of random cack that you find on the planet that's a pretty novel idea. Imagine that. It'd be cool if all smoke was coming out of the entrails and stuff as you take off. And splattering and things. Yeah, it's sort of falling apart. As you had. Yeah, that'd be cool. There's so many possibilities. I think Hello Games has only touched the surface. There isn't a law to space and it being a sacred. If they can crack that in a big way, it could change the game as we know it. Think dragons or some kind of incarnation thereof or some bird-like creatures that can snap and drop you where in a worm nest or something. Playing adrift multiple times just unlocks so many visions of what could be on the horizon for No Man's Sky. I honestly think that we need a sense of intrepidation and danger when we land on a planet from threat of the alien wildlife. You know, every single show on sci-fi, a space adventure or a space fairing, always has that sense of, oh my God, what are we landing on? We can see that there's big life forms here. We better watch our backs. Yeah. And, you know, some of those planets could have predatory evil on them. Yeah, 100% agree. More variety. Insert game elements here. So, yeah, the pretty much game does need more variety throughout. It does still feel very copy and pasted in places, especially when you've got 18 quintillion planets and you've maybe got, what, 50-odd variants of biome. You are going to start seeing patterns and you are going to see patterns rather quickly. You really are. I want to know that the whole story means and finishes stories like Ariadne, etc. 100% user. Heck yeah. Yeah, stuff as well as commented. 
QE haven't gotten a gib in a while. From what I remember, last year was a huge year. There was no gib. Yeah, last year was, I would say it was a middle year last year. I think Next, Beyond and Origins have all been sort of gib-worthy sort of years. I would say, I would say we haven't had an update the size of Origins when it came to variety for some time. And we haven't had an update the size of Next when it done a whole overhaul in the way that would gather resources and things for a long time either. I would love to see a massive overhaul to pretty much everything when it comes to gameplay mechanics, gameplay loop and end game and also tying up all the stories. So that's what I'm hoping to see. Cool. And we've got um, Steers, what, Steers, whatever your name is. More combat in every way. PvE and definitely PvP, clans, guilds or whatever you want to call them. Stop letting any old thing recharge your systems. I don't even craft fuels because you don't need to. Cooking actually does something useful. Cooking that actually does something useful, yeah. Never do it because there's no real reason to. Maybe certain foods give certain buffs that are actually useful. Now, some foods do give buffs, like a jetpack overhaul, uh, override, where you can boost for a while, but that's just like eating a blue plant that you find on the planet. Or well, there's one that tops up your hazard protection, and there's some that pops, does your life support. But yeah, you can find plants that do that, oxygen that do that, loads of fuels that do that. The foods don't really do much for you. I mean, eating raw meat does give you about back your health and your shields, which is great when you're in PvP or being chased down by sentinels. So it's always good to have some raw meat on you. But other than that, food and cooking. Yeah, I agree. They need to do something more with Cronus. They definitely do. You need to be able to turn in more than one at a time because that's just painful. It's like watching freaking paint dry. And it'd be nice if rather than just give nanites, perhaps there could be some other options there to get some modules, S-Class or X-Class or even Sentinelized Tech or something new, something completely new. Maybe some shaders or maybe some cosmetics for other stuff. I don't know. But yeah, it'd be nice if they added in some other perks for eating the food. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Maybe they need to put in a proper survival mode where you do need to eat to top stuff up. And maybe there isn't so many resources. I don't know. You know, because cyber survival mode at the moment feels a bit redundant because we've got the permadeath and we've got normal mode. And in between is this sort of like mode that doesn't really know what it is, the survival mode. It'd be nicer if they took that and done something more with it, fleshed it out a bit, made it so cooking was more integral, perhaps, you know, and maybe that whole bed idea earlier about, you know, sleeping for different direct durations, a little bit like in Starfield, gives different perks. Yeah, and maybe they should look at maybe the perk list of eating inside of Starfield and implement some of that into No Man's Sky. Who freaking knows? But anyways, totally agree. Anyway, that's the first poll. and We've been at this for some time. So... I've got two other polls, so let's <laughs> let's go over to the second poll, shall we? Cool, yeah. I'm just going to take another mouthful of my tea because it's slowly getting colder, and then we go through this one. Okay, chums, well, this one is just a poll. I'm not going to read out the comments on this one. I just want to see holistically how people feel. So that last poll of people's ideas, I've sort of maybe framed those and bottled them into encapsulated them into each of these different sorts of variants so here we go this year for no man's sky is said to be big we are halfway through the year how do you hope hello games has focuses the rest of their efforts for the remainder variety planet flora and fauna has won this poll at 36 percent okay Gameplay, loot pools, polish and tweaks has, has hit an 8% of people. Multiplayer stability, missions and functionality, etc. has hit a 6%. That's the lowest. Endgame loop, story, raids and lore, etc. Tying everything up in a little bow. 32% of people have hit that. So out of the, the the main things i kind of see that you know they need to in, they need to do something with the variety and planet and flora and also something to do with the end game loop and lore yeah i would say they're the main things these two you could probably put together but even if you put them together it it doesn't come even close to the top two does it you know so yeah I'm hoping that Hello Games feels the same way. I'm hoping that we get some more variety to the planets and I'm hoping we get more to the end game loop. That's what the community wants. Now, Hello Games says that they always listen. 
Now, I only have a portion of the community. Right? I put this poll up nine days ago. It's had 332 votes. This is just a small snippet of the community that's actually playing. There's a heck of a lot of people playing. And yeah, so this is just a small glimpse. But I think it's a decent enough glimpse to say, hold on, this is what the community is saying. And hopefully they've echoed this across all of social media. And hopefully Hello Games, like they say, are always listening. Hopefully we're going to see more planet variety with, with Fauna and Flora and something to do with the end game loop, raids and lore, something to keep people coming back and maybe playing at end game. Okay, Hello Games, over to you people. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. The final poll I only put live just the other day. I put it live 16 hours ago. So this one is, what do you feel most likely on a release roadmap for No Man's Sky this year? And got your own roadmap. I said put it in the comments, but we haven't had any comments. So I don't believe we have anyway. Let me, um, let me just scroll down. Oh, we have. We've, we've got a couple of comments. But yeah, I'll just scroll down there quickly so you can see those. I'll, I'll scroll quite slowly. But yeah, October and no November for any gameplay enhancements. August for cloud saves, in my honest opinion. Hmm, okay. Just Jim, official, has said, To be honest, I think it's going to be another Expedition Redux. I'm only saying this because now we have a new terminal inside the Anomaly and hopefully we can pick which Expedition to do. Then a Content and Quality Life update in September. Then Light No Fire will launch in December. I didn't even consider. Didn't even consider Light No Fire. I don't think we're going to see Light No Fire into August, September of 2025 next year. Not this year, next year. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking if we were to see Light No Fire come out this year, we'd already see pre-order bundles. There'd be a lot more hype. There'll be more trailers coming from Hello Games. Think back of No Man's Sky and how they hyped that. We'll be seeing IGN firsts. All that sort of stuff should be kicking off before we get anywhere close to um, you know, Light No Fire. At least that's what I think anyway. But anyway, let's scroll up. Let's, let's uh, go through these uh, results here. Okay, here we go. Cross cloud and save July <clears throat> and then summer big update late August, early September. So Jim's kind of thinking the same, but a couple of months forwards from now, not not as soon as now ish. You know, I kind of feel that this Adrift Expedition was quite a long one. And I feel that they've done the Adrift Expedition for a long time for a reason to, for them to get ready. Why we're distracted with the Adrift Expedition to then drop something in almost immediately after. And considering inside of PC Experimental right now, we have found cloud saves for Hello Games' servers rendered out. It's there. It's something they've been playing with, but they've still left it in. And they could just unrender it, unrender it out and put it as live. That, ex that actual PC Experimental branch has not been pushed out to console right now. And uh, yeah, my PC Experimental, my PC save, at the moment, if I want to try and join my PlayStation save, it won't let me because it says it's incompatible. They've kept the PC Experimental separate for a reason. And I think it's because as soon as they put it over to console, whatever they've got in PC Experimental is probably going to be at the point it needs to go live. And considering it's cloud save, I think it's closer on the horizon than maybe September. You could be right with August, perhaps. I, I think that's coming soon. And then, yeah, the summer update not so long after that. But anyway, I was thinking it might happen that right after a drift, but cloud save, cross save, it could need more work than what I'm envisaging. Who knows? Nothing in July. Big summer update, August, September. Yeah, that, 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 that could work. 40% of people are agreeing with that statement. And that is what's won this poll. So going by what the community is saying, they've usually got the finger on the pulse, this old community. They're freaking good. They are good. So maybe, maybe that's the case. Big summer update in August or September. And then that's it. Okay, another expedition right after a drift ends. Cont up, content update in September. 9% of people thought that. Summer update and expedition in August, September. 21% of people said that. Well, they're the two highest and they're almost the same. The only difference is it's a summer update and expedition there. Not a massive, um, big summer update, just a summer update with an expedition. So we're talking maybe similar to what last year was with Echoes and all that sort of stuff. Not a Gib year. This one is a big Gib year. 
So 40% of people think it's going to be a big gib year. The other 21% think it's going to be similar to last year and we're going to get an up update and expedition that makes it feel bigger than it actually is. Okay, just want to see poll results, 15%. Okay, so there we go, people. I think we should go with what the community is saying here and say that we're probably not going to see anything in July. What we're going to see is something happen in August or September. That's where I'm going to set my sort of expectations or sort of like hopes, I should say. And when it comes to what we're going to get, I think in, in line with the community, hopefully it's going to be end game stuff and hopefully it's going to be lore tie ups and all that sort of shenanigans. And whatever else, what, what else did they say? Let's just uh, hop back quickly over to the other poll. So on the other poll, variety planets for flora and fauna. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of where to set our sights, I think, people. I mean, when I say that's where we should be setting our sights, I'm saying we're setting our sights there, mainly because Hello Games have said multiple times in the past, we're always listening to our community. We're always looking at what you, what's going on out there and we like to give the community a bit of what they want and then we like to add a little bit of what we want. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully they've got their radar switched on. They've got their finger on the pulse like they normally have and hopefully that's what we're going to see. I mean, previous year, the community was saying ship customization, ship customization, ship customization. What did we get last year? Well, early this year, I should say ship customization. They are listening, people. They are. So let's keep our fingers crossed. There's a lot of people that have also said about station ownership and the ability to bring abandoned systems and planets to life and do terraforming. There's all these little ideas out there that if Hello Games are listening and listening well, and I'm hearing a lot of people saying they'd like to be able to make their own custom expeditions and use that console in the back of the actual spatial anomaly to launch those custom missions. Hopefully Hello Games is listening to that too some sort of way of making it even more sandboxy with toggles and game modes it's like if you watched Beeble and um well Beeble Bum Go, Jason Plays, Zane, Golden Geck and there's others now that are all doing the speed runs and the Survivor series where you start with no ship at the start if Hello Games could put in actual game modes like that with all those rules already preset You've also got myself, Ricey and Cynical that are doing Light No Sky, where we're trying to play light, No Man's Sky like it's Light No Fire, where you can't really use your ship, it doesn't take off, you can just use it as a mobile campsite, and you're going to use your fauna to ride around as pets and mounts on, on a singular planet. That could be nice as a game mode as well, you know? So, yeah, Hello Games, if you're listening. I think at the moment, because you've got a new game, Light No Fire, in the fire you know it's on the bake it's going to be coming soon handing over more controls to the community for no man's sky in the way that it could breathe its own life could be an idea anything that you can give to the players to make player driven content might be an idea to keep no man's sky alive like maybe you adding in some sort of way of bringing in mods on consoles and other platforms you know like we've got with pc like making custom missions or custom expeditions that sort of thing you know the base computer idea with the uh, part counter and also the guest book all these sort of things would help breathe life driven by the community i saw professor cynical the other day hitting up spore what a game you know how cool would it be to land on a planet and you actually get like some sort of microbiology unit you suck up some particles and from there, you can then go back to your base, put them into a Petri dish and start to create your own fauna. And it starts off a mini game, a little bit like Spore inside of No Man's Sky, where you can make your own procedural fauna based on this little mini game and then launch them out into the wild. <laughs> I've made all my own little creatures. Yeah, you're probably going to have a planet just full of phallus creatures. I mean, it goes without saying. <laughs> But you have got the report system if there's anything that is really obscene out there, you know? But I think um, a lot of us are adult enough that play this game to know that it's just a bit of harmless fun. I mean, Spore did well, didn't it? Yeah, there you go. Just saying. 
Anyway, hopefully, Hello Games, you're listening. Hopefully you've seen this this roundup of what the community would love to see come to No Man's Sky. Even if it doesn't appear in this year's update, it might give you for, food for thought for next year, you know? So anyway, salute to Mondo people out there in the viewerverse. You're all freaking awesome. You've all got freaking awesome ideas and your grey matters, haven't you? Thank you for sharing them with me on those polls. And thank you, people, for watching through this video. If you've got this far, give yourself a pat on the back. Heck yes, you've earned yourself a brew. Go get yourself a, a lovely cup of tea. I'll finish mine. I need to go get another one now. But yeah, I've got my own brew. Heck yes, I have. Yes, you can get it over in cherazina.co.uk. Heck yes, you can. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Will we hear the community cheer? Hello games, you are super creative, super cool, hardworking, and always listening. B-I-G is G-I-B backwards. Is this a hit? This will be a G-I-B year. Will we hear the community cheer? The game has grown and grown so much. That you all, for all that you do, thank you Hello Games. B-I-G is G-I-B backwards, is this a hit, this will be a G-I-B year? Will we hear the community cheer? Thank you Hello Games!